Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. <laughs> to talk about this video, we need a beer. Video with a V. To talk about this video, we need a beer. <laughs> Cheers. In this episode of SV Tango, we do what you do in the summer in the mid. We celebrate Sweden's most important holiday. Go where nature takes us. Watch Croatia battle France in the World Cup. And generally forget that we're not 21 anymore. Last time our heritage confused friends joined us in Ionian Greece, where the girls worked hard. And the beaches were stunning. And the historical sites mind blowing. Greece is done. Over and out. Almost seven in the morning, we set off from Corfu. Uh, about 45 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, we are headed up to Montenegro. The first time we tried to do an anchorage, we lost the engine, so let's hope the passage goes a little bit better. The passage from Greece to Montenegro went well. Mike, who didn't have much sailing experience, was like a hawk on watch, and would alert us to boats so far on the horizon, you needed binoculars to see them. But we definitely appreciated how seriously he took it. The forecast was for 15 to 20 knots, but we ended up having to sail upwind, and 35 knots, which resulted in Francisco, another crew member, flying out of bed, luckily with no injuries. Montenegro is very different than quiet Greece that we came from. Here super yachts go hand in hand with super rich people. But we made it into Budva just in time for Swedish Midsummer. Our friend Mike was in charge of festivities that day. All right, I hereby pronounce Midsummer started. Midsummer is Sweden's most important holiday. As Swedes do, celebration means drinking. <laughs> After Swedish Midsummer, we were happy with some easy sailing in the beautiful fjord known as Bay of Kotor. Me is trying to prevent dementia by playing Sudoku. I've gotten to medium level. <laughs> Since Montenegro doesn't have as many tourists as neighboring Croatia, you often find secluded islands with only a monastery on it. Somehow this particular island blew us away. It had a guard dog which kept running around the island barking at all the boats sailing by. It was a very busy dog. What do you think about the place, Scott? It's pretty nice, I gotta say. <laughs> Thing is, right there. Hopefully. And after a day like that, it is always magical to return to Tanga on Anchorage with a view like this. Montenegro has duty free fuel, so the last thing you do here is to fuel up. We had a chat with the fuel guys, and it's crazy how much fuel the super yachts takes on. 700,000. 700,000 700, liters. liters. And it took. 13 hours. That's just insane. <laughs> Luckily, we don't need that much. Montenegro is well worth a visit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the coastline is very short, so most cruisers go into Bay of Couture. But that's really stunning too. The views are really beautiful when you go hiking in the mountains, and um, it's relatively cheap. Um, and then the atmosphere in the medieval towns, uh, yeah, really nice. Yeah, and, and you know, there's not that many tourists compared to other countries nearby, so you almost call it undiscovered. Almost. Almost. <laughs> but since Bay of Kotor is a fjord uh, with mountains on all sides of it, uh, you shouldn't expect really good sailing winds there, but it is absolutely stunning and highly recommended. Yeah, I don't. I hardly think we used our sails in there actually. No, I think it was the calmest motoring we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Croatia is a lot more busy than Montenegro, and lots of young people go out there. In Dubrovnik, our crew was too tired to go out, so mommy and daddy decided to go out on their own. Do ein Fest. Do ein Fest. No, do ein Fest. I am. Always support. Thank you. 
After the party in Dubrovnik, it's really nice that Croatia can also offer some quiet restaurant experiences, where you literally moor your boat outside the restaurant. Croatia also has some stunning national parks. We joined our crew on a bicycle trip around lovely Miliet Island. Go, 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 go. Whoa. Oh, they're on the right. Ooh, yeah, there's a little. Here you can swim with the strong current in a strait connecting the Adriatic Sea with a saltwater lake. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and now, try now and the go. rapids. Go, 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 go! After a long day exploring, nothing beats a sundowner in Tenga's car. Yes. <laughs> Six o'clock, champagne. Let's go. That's Let's the go. best part of it. Running the behind <laughs> schedule, we should be drinking champagne by 4 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> like a Me, um, kiss. Some wine. So. Ah, fantastic. Thank you so much. Should we kiss? It's actually <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by our young Irish neighbors, we started to act a bit like kids ourselves. We're being grown ups. <laughs> so, smile if you masturbate. <laughs> Girls! Girls! <laughs> <laughs> when we were in VAR, Croatia was in the World Cup football final against France. This was huge for Croatia. We had a clear plan for what we would do if Croatia either won or lost. What are we cheering for? Croatia! Croatia, Croatia for sure. Fantastic. Woo! If Croatia wins, we go to Hula Hula. If Croatia <laughs> loses, we go to Hula <laughs> The crowd went nuts when Croatia scored. They scored again, but in the end, Croatia did not win. So we went to Hula Hula Bar. Have you yeah, been yeah, to yeah. Hula Hula before? Oh, once or twice. Oh, have, you, have you ever scored at Hula Hula? I take the fifth minimum on that one. And what do we do now that Croatia didn't win? I'm sober, I'm sober. Yeah, Croatia is a double-edged sword. I mean, it's been inviting tourists for many decades, so it's just easy there. Yeah, the infrastructure for tourists is just very good. Um, and in the summertime, a lot of people go there, so you meet a lot of people. And there's a, there's a lot of things to do as well, so... Yeah, the one downside with all of that, which is just what happens when places get popular, sometimes they get overexploited, and then the prices start to go up, especially when you compare it to Montenegro. Um, you know, just to give you an example, our cruising permit just to bring the boat there was close to a thousand euros alone. It's almost like they don't even want cruisers to come there. Yeah, it's, I think their main business is charter boats, so it's, it seems like that cruising permit is to scare away cruisers. Yeah, and apparently it's worked pretty well. Yeah, we didn't meet that many other yeah. cruisers actually. Yeah. No. And then in terms of the sailing, you know, it's, it's all over the place, so it's, you gotta be ready for anything. It can be dead calm, which a lot of times it is, so you end up motoring quite a bit. Uh, but sometimes it can just start blowing 60 knots out of nowhere and uh, you got to be ready for that at all times. But they have more than a thousand islands that you can visit so eventually you will find that secluded anchorage. Yeah. You know, popular places are popular for a reason and Croatia is just that. It is really stunning. And our crew seems to like it too. Yeah, I think so. What do you think girls? It's so great. <laughs> yeah, but it's so beautiful. Here. Yeah. 
What do you have to say to this trip? Me? Yeah. I feel like the Polish slave labor. <laughs> I cook and I row.